Fox Business. So think you're a Camry? Well, the government thinks you're a Cadillac, so don't be at all surprised if they start charging you like one. Because while this may be news to you, if you've got a good health plan, you become a good target. Washington's not telling you this, so allow me. Generous coverage is Cadillac coverage that warrants a Cadillac tax bill for the privilege. And that includes a lot more folks than just the 250 grand and over crowd. Count Connecticut Congressman Joe Courtney very worried, and Joe's a Democrat. He says this plan will hurt more people than it will help. So, Congressman, we should stipulate here that um, actually to have a Cadillac plan, usually if it includes dental coverage, you know, dollar to a donut, that's a Cadillac plan. But a lot of people have that, right? Uh, absolutely. The um, definition of Cadillac coverage under the, the Senate Finance Committee bill that was voted on earlier today is uh, $8,000 for an individual and $21,000 for family coverage. Um, as you point out, um, policies which have coverage for things that are as basic as dental care, uh, particularly for older uh, lives, people over age 50, uh, and frankly in places uh, in the Northeast and, and along the, the sort of bi-coastal parts of the, the country, um, this sort of one-size-fits-all definition of Cadillac coverage sweeps up millions and millions of middle-class people. You have listeners right now, I'm sure, who are self-employed who are paying a lot more than $8,000 for their coverage. Um, well, how and, would it work uh, then, this is, con Congressman? I mean, the, uh, technically then, your boss or my boss in this case would have to uh, pay the tax, but invariably would probably roll down to me or my benefits would be cut or something, right? That, that's right. I mean, the, the theory behind it is that this is a way of containing cost growth, but as you point out, I mean, the only real way that you can do that is to create huge uh, co-payments and deductibles, uh, which is just a shift to the, to the worker uh, that is presently covered today with um, this type of coverage. And, um, and, and that's a cost shift. It's not a cost savings. It's something that, uh, you know, I worked on these issues when I was in the state legislature in Connecticut when, um, you know, I saw that this issue was starting to emerge on the Senate side. I helped organize a letter, which we now have 175 co-signatories on in the House, um, to, which was sent to the Speaker a few days ago, telling her that this is a, a, a proposal that we should reject in the so, House. So, but could I ask you this, Congressman, if this remains in there, um, and it likely will in one way, shape, or form, um, would you vote against it? I would really struggle. I, I, I would tell you that. I personally, I actually am somewhat optimistic that we are going to push back in the House uh, against this measure. And as you know, there's there's many steps ahead here. I mean, you've got to merge the two Senate bills. You've got to merge the three House bills. There's a conference committee, and um, I, frankly, I think as awareness grows about the fact that the Finance Committee um, is really using a tax club. To, to really reshape people's health insurance, uh, again, across a broad sw swath of America, uh, I think there's going to be a lot of pushback. All right. Well, the process has just only started. Congressman, very good to have you. That's right. All right. Thanks, well, Neil. Thank you. Max works.